Hi, how are you? Okay. Hi, I'm not too bad. Yourself? Yes, very well. Thank you. Thank you for having a chat with me today. So, no problem. You've got an exciting project underway, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Exciting things happening and to come. Um, managed to acquire a nice bit of bit of land last year through the the lockdown and you know making making the most out of it as we go along yeah amazing so i think today i just wanted to obviously have a chat to learn a bit more about you a bit more about the project itself with yep. you know, as much detail as you would like to give or you know not to give what the plans are for the future as well because this is yep. hopefully the first of many first projects. of many yeah um so let's just talk about the current project in the the first instance you know where is it how many units a bit of the backstory so Blenavon, which is just above kind of South Wales. Not many people would be kind of familiar. It's like a small valleys town. It's an old okay. heritage kind of like coal mining town. Um, we managed to get the land on a really good deal. The guy that sold it to me is actually, he actually was my interview within my dissertation for uni. That's how I met him. And he kind of just became my mentor in kind of property I kind of kept asking him questions and we kind of got to know each other turns out he actually only lives down the road from where I actually live so it's perfect he kind of n nurtured me into where to go what to yeah. do managed to acquire the land it's currently 25 units looking at but there's some kind of leeway where it's going to be 20 or 25, depending on, I don't know, access is a kind of a bit of a thing at the minute with splays and drainage. Yeah. But yeah. between 20 and 25, we're kind of hoping for 25 is, fingers crossed, what we're going for. Yeah. But, and what sort of units is that? Is that sort of terrace, detached? What, what sort of mix? So it's kind of a bit of a... At the minute, with, if we were going for 25, it would be kind of like five detached homes and then the rest kind of a mix of semi-detached and terrace. Um, whereas affordable homes come in to start with, they were obviously looking for the higher percentage of affordable homes and we would have to be delivering five or six. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along the line, they kind of said, we don't want that anymore. We only want like a 2% affordable home so we only have to deliver I think it's one terraced house or we can like subdivide it and do it as two flats so we're kind of Amazing. in negotiation with what they want on that so that was perfect for us we were <laughs> kind of happy to go with that and yeah you know I mean hopefully when it comes down to, if it comes down to 20 houses it would be less detached and more kind of terrace because that's kind of what's selling in that kind of area with the top price that we can get for them yeah and what is the gdb obviously depending on the units but what roughly gdb are you looking at across the whole side um, if it was going to be 25 it's somewhere just over 4 million gdb with profits still being in the seven figures so which is why the loss of five houses is upsetting <laughs> But no, we're kind of but hopefully you hopefully for the best. Result. And I mean, the the deal we got for the land was actually amazing. I mean, if you think what we got for it for twenty five units, there's a bit of land down the road that's going for twice the price for five single bed flats. Oh wow! Okay, so amazing, and that was off market, I assume. You yeah, yeah. Site. As I said, Except my. With the landowner he was he's kind of owned it for about 10 years now he's a kind of a big property man he owns hundreds and hundreds of rentals he bought a kind of a shopping mall last week and he was he was when he was talking to me about this land he said you know I've kind of got to the age now where I can't be bothered to go through development anymore I'm just holding my rentals and he said you know it's a, it's only a well it's about two acres just over two acres and he said, you know, you it's a lot of units for first development, but it's because of the area it's in, it should be quite easy to do. You know, they're not big, spectacular houses, but you can make them in a way where they 
you know, suit you and fit your needs. So we're more than happy to go with it. And it's perfect. Yeah. And have you taken the site through planning entirely yourself or did it have some planning on it um, at the point of purchase? So it basically, no, it had planning previously, but about 15 years ago, that lapsed okay. because that company that had it actually went into bankruptcy if I remember correctly. So they kind of lost it. And this is how the current landowner acquired it through that. Um, but it had no um, planning on it, but it's a development site that the council want to develop. It's kind of been a right. plot of land that the town want, because at the minute it's just been kind of laid to waste. No one's done anything with it. It's already within a residential area they're pushing yeah. to get it done they were pushing the landowner that sold it to us to get it done they're pushing us to get it done so when yeah. it comes to planning we've kind of gone for the first stages of planning already but when we first even acquired the land council were already when are you going to develop it how long is it going to take to develop what are you doing with it so it's kind of not a given but kind of but a, as, as given. you can get with yeah things. yeah so that's kind of where we are at now. The landowner was actually kind of kind enough. We had a, it was like a, a vocal option agreement. I bought a flat last year that I renovated and I told him that from the flat selling, I would put that money into buying the land from him. We had that agreement in August and he gave me, I think like six months to do so. Yeah. Sold the flat in. December then got the land but he kind of gave us the agreement that from August we were allowed to carry out surveys and kind of get underway with the land so we kind of already had a head start but then obviously with COVID and lockdown and the council I didn't realize how big of a an obstacle kind of council would be um <laughs> especially during COVID times, they don't seem to want to contribute to it. Anything? No. You can blow at the best of the times and then give them something like COVID and it's something to run with, it seems. Uh, no, exactly. So it's not, that's kind of where the majority of everything being slow has happened because they do take a while to reply to the easiest of yeah. things. You know, we want meetings on site and, you know, on the day of, they say, We'll reschedule for the three weeks. So I have told me this. Painful. But yeah. <laughs> no, that's kind of where we're at. You know, the architect was found, the contractors to build are found. We've got as from what your course said, you know, building a good team, we kind of realized early on that these people are actually who you're gonna be talking to you know, week in, week yeah. out. So, you know, we yeah. kind of did a we kind of sat down with a couple architects we found one that kind of lives kind of in the area. He knows kind of the area, what it's supposed to be like. Yeah. He got the side of us coming as new developers. He was also teaching us. So we you know, uh, decided with him yeah. and from him, we found other team members, which kind of all, yeah. you know, I like speaking to him <laughs> on a weekly basis, phone calls, whereas other people yeah. aren't. That's yeah, nice, people but... sort of sometimes downplay the importance of that. So obviously not only is the professional team vital for delivering the site as well as possible, but literally, you know, in this job, these are, they're like your colleagues almost. So yeah, yeah, you want them to have a good laugh with them and, and actually enjoy the time and conversations you have. Otherwise, you're tied into one for probably a year plus. And if you don't like that person, that's a lot of time to spend. Yeah, it's with a bit that, sour. You can do. <laughs> No, exactly. Yeah. And as I said, uh, our, our whole team is a, a good, I said, my, I haven't even told you my partner in it is my dad. He. Okay. Yeah. It was kind of him convincing in like the last six months of my third year of uni. I was saying, you know, I really want to get into property. I don't know what I want to do. I want to like yeah. renovate a place and flip it. My idea was to go into rentals with that profit. And then, you know, in the, I had my dissertation. I did an interview with a you know, property um, renter, I suppose, and 
he yeah. kind of convinced me that renting is to start with i need to build capital and he said developments are probably not the quickest way by any means he said patience is definitely key but you need capital because having one rental property isn't going to hold you over and it's not going to build enough income within two three years to yeah. buy you another rental so that's kind of we went into that no, i did a whole yeah go on sorry yeah <laughs> i am um... yeah, no absolutely so it's so agree with that that you know they think getting into rental in the first instance is the best way and it's a way but you know you do want to build a big capital part which you can then rapidly scale the portfolio exactly and that's that's when i kind of you know we got the flat went through that kind of stages kind of did that throughout summer through lockdown and i had you know big convincing of my dad to he recently retired i said you know, you kind of need something to do in your retirement. You, maybe you should help me. And so that's that's kind of how it comes about. And, you know, it's been, I don't know now, what, over a year since I think we are well, first kind of speaking into getting the land. And we're kind of just the step behind starting. I mean, as I spoke with you, we we're supposed to start now, September. But with everything getting pushed back, it's a bit of a pain. So maybe it's looking like early next year. That's not a problem. As I said, patience yeah. is what I've learned. I went, you know, I'm in no rush. I know it's going to be a, like a 12 to 16 month project. Yeah. So it's by no means going to be quick. So a few months yeah. where we start before isn't too much of a problem. Is it, yeah, it's not going to be the be all and end all of of the deal but yeah so hopefully exactly. break ground with is it a mains contractor you're using who's just going to handle the entire build package for you or is it a subcontracted approach no we've gone for like a, a main contractor we same way we kind of went about getting our team we went for someone because it's our first development we want it to be a stamp in kind of our name kind of show what yeah. we can come into the future so we didn't want to just go for a contractor that's building hundreds and hundreds around the area because at the minute there is yeah. hundreds going up and so we went with a contractor that's fairly new I mean he's only been in it I think three to five years maybe so he's also starting to put his stamp on his work he wants to do well we didn't want anyone cutting corners so we went yeah. with him and he, he's got a development going up quite close to us and he said you know, before your development starts, you can visit that if you want, you know, every week, every month, see how that's going along. And, you know, make your decision and from these other developments that I have. And he was amazing. He knew all his costs. Every, it, it was perfect for us just starting out for someone to also yeah. kind of, as I said, the, all our team members seem to direct us in the way we want. They don't just sit back and, you know, let us go crazy with what we need to do. They they push us and they help us. So, yeah. Yeah, which is, is so important as, um, to, to, well, for any developer, let alone, you know, first-time developer, it's really important to almost have someone that can hold your hand a little bit through the process and support you yeah. and guide you on the next step. Just literally just slowly ferry you along the process. And you'd be surprised, you know, how much you will learn um, just from those professionals in your first project, um, you know, about development, you know, being hands-on, it would be... Um, yeah, it'd be amazing. Well, that's what I kind of, I went into it a bit, a bit more egotistical than I probably should have thinking, you know, I've got this, I can do this all by myself. You know, I'm a developer now. And it turned out within <laughs> a few months, I realized, you know, you don't know as much as any of these guys that have been doing it a while can, can teach you, you know, just a meeting on site with an architect, he points out something to you about like, you know, a splay or a turning circle for emergency services. And you're like, oh yeah, it's yeah, you know, it's, I mean, it humbles you 100%. a bit. You yeah. kind of realize you Const do need those people yeah. that know what they're on about around you. It's actually easier. It's easier to have more people that know what they're doing than you trying to know everything. Oh, I, I always, you've probably heard me say this in the training as well. You, know, you don't have to be an architect. You don't have to be a specialist in that field. Your speciality yeah. is bringing all these people together um yeah. bringing all the moving parts together and leaning on these specialities and their 
you know, high level expertise and knowledge in certain fields. And it's, you know, the true skill is being able to draw on all these people at the right time and to, to have it all work in, you know, like one machine. That's the true skill of developer. You don't need to know all these things in and out. And you will, you know, over time just happen to, you will naturally you know, develop your own knowledge. Um, but that's where a lot of people get it wrong is actually, you no, know, use these people. They're the ones that have gone to university to study architecture for how many years. Yeah. Use people, um, you know, don't try and do it yourself. Let the professionals do what they need to do and you do what you need to do. Um, that's yeah, exactly. amazing that you've got such a, a good team already around you because that will be uh, invaluable. And it will make it enjoyable as well. The whole process will be enjoyable for you once you actually start on site. That's the thing. I mean, it's stressful, obviously. Delays and everything make it stressful. But being able to, you know, come into a team, meet on site with a team that they're not stressed because they been through it all before they're obviously he's an architect he's not just our site he's got a few others as well that he's helping out with he knows the struggle especially with covid you know he's more experienced so makes me less stressed makes me happier to know that it oh. is just it's a process <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's a process absolutely um and how what's the financing situation on this site looking for have you used um investors bank debt or, or what's the plan with that so banks weren't really ready to lend to us as kind of first-time developers or their kind of interest rates were just a bit too high for us to start with and yeah. we our architect again great man he said he's recently designed something for someone who was an investment banker or a fund manager he put us in contact with him okay. he gave us the names of two men that are investors in property and yeah we kind of they were more than willing to you know say you know we can we can help you out you know our risk isn't as high as the banks and he said you know as a they're always looking for what what can you do if it goes wrong in the end what what's your out yeah. and mm -hmm. these investors are property investors they said you know if it kind of goes wrong we all just we can buy properties off you we can invest in them ourselves we can help you out so that's kind of where we're at and it kind of we kind of got that sorted early before we even needed to look at finance amazing we kind of had yeah. that in the bag and then we've kind of been speaking with them also along the way they again there are the people of our team that kind of point us in the right direction coming from property themselves was a great kind of aspect to have yeah. them from so yeah i mean that's that's where we're at it was Getting finance was quite a a stressful, probably the most stressful part of the whole process. To be honest, it's um, it's not the best. Yeah, it's, it's no, it I is. Mean, it is stressful. I'm going through it now with one of our sites. It isn't. I don't know many people that enjoy dealing with banks or anything like that. It's, you know, it's never particularly enjoyable. But what you said there about um, your architect is like the perfect example. The amount of times people say, "Oh, there's no investors out there," or you know, "There's no money to invest in deals or something." It, but most people, if they asked someone like that, that person would know someone. So in that situation, you ask someone who knew someone who knew someone who was like, "Yeah, I'd love to invest." Yeah. And that was the thing, actually. Yeah, just, it'll... To, to start with, I was as again, I was in my egotistical first months of being it. I said, "No, we can't ask." The architect for investors i don't want him to know that we're struggling to find finance or anything like this and my dad wise beyond his years said you know he's been in the game he, he builds sites he knows investors he knows finance and literally within a week we were in contact with two big investors and it was kind of all sorted and the stress was gone I thought, oh, why did i yeah but it's why did you like hold on so long yeah, that was yeah. the thing. And he's more the numbers guy than I am. He's knowledgeable beyond anything. And he used the yeah. the costing or the appraisal, the big Excel spreadsheets. It's yeah. got all the tabs <laughs> and everything. And, you know, be going through that costing everything. And I, it goes over my head. Yeah, you know, I haven't fully grasped it all. He knows what he's doing. But all I'm seeing is these big numbers. And I'm thinking, <laughs> you know, like how are we yeah. ever going to acquire that especially with banks telling you now the banks were telling us you know interest rates are really high really really high and it wasn't looking 
good. And then, as I said, you know, you just speak to people. People know people. It kind of all, yeah, all worked out in the end. So you know, yeah, no, you know, that's, that's like the perfect story because I, I, I always say that to people is you'll be surprised who's out there. Most people just don't ask. They're, they're, yeah. they're literally they're like, oh, and it is often like almost like a nervous an ego thing not wanting to ask almost being too proud and you know banks with covid at the minute they are more cautious you know some of the interest rates are higher and you know don't be wrong sometimes bank, banks are great to use but there's so many other options out there you just have to ask you know that's the first yeah. step is asking that question who do you know that might want to invest in this um and you'd be surprised as to how many yeah, people you know, know somebody that has the invest. original the original investment banker or fund manager that we spoke to that put us in contact, he said, you know, I actually have loads of clients that have just, you know, built up this wealth over their years in property and do just want to sit back and invest. And yeah. I said, well, where are they all? Like, how could I get in contact? Well, we just need to know the right people, you know, be in the right places. You know, it's, he said, once you get in contact with people like me, or you just speak to people who know the business, they're everywhere. I said, but yeah. You'll never find them if you just if you just Google like you know investors, they don't just pop up. You need to, you need and to, that's you what, need to network and, and yeah. you know ask the questions, get to meet people, things like that. Absolutely. Um but what would you say overall in the obviously you you're only part way through the process, but to date, what has been the biggest learning curve for you, do you think? I would say honestly the weird as it sounds the timing of it all i honestly thought things would happen a lot quicker than they would you know when i've seen you and your videos and say you know our planning can take you know between six months sometimes i thought uh you know it never really takes that long <laughs> <laughs> it really does and patience with everything and honestly the whole kind of root of learning to realize that development is like a 12 15 month process and it is nothing that you can do to really rush that you know houses take time to build the planning side takes time it's nothing that you can skip over because you know i was thinking i still the fact that we have to push back till next year instead of starting this year was was still something i had to really learn to get over it was quite a, a hurdle in my mind, but kind of timing, patience, I kind of went into it thinking everything would kind of happen quickly, especially, you know, when we first got in contact with just talking about buying the land, I thought, oh, by next year, we'll have 20 houses. It'll be amazing. Yeah. Finding it's, out that yeah, it's... The, a, the, is probably one of the things that most people... I always, I always say that to people who don't underestimate it, it, it's a long-term play, development is. It's not get rich quick. It's not an overnight thing. It is you yeah. know, focusing on the deal for, you know, before you even break ground, you could spend a year on a deal comfortably before exactly, you even yeah. start building something. Else. You've got to build it. So, yeah, it is It is long-term and learning that patience is uh, a skill in itself. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And then, again, with stuff I've learned, it's just, because I'm new to it, everything was new knowledge to me and kind of more fascinating than stressful. Like I had a little book with all <laughs> your course. We went down week by week and kind of wrote it all. And when we'd go to kind of meetings, someone would say something. I'd be, um, let me just, you yeah. know, no, <laughs> green belt. Yeah, obviously that's, yeah. And it was kind of <laughs> like that. All these terms were flying about. I had no idea what anything was. So it's like the amount yeah. of knowledge as well, the amount of moving parts, just about kind of intricate details that people wouldn't normally think of. They think, oh, development, you buy land, you know, you build it. And you build it. That, that's it. Yeah. yeah. And that's kind there's of what millions. I thought originally. But no, there's like, that's why I was looking around the sites around here and they take like three years, four years to build. I'm like, why well, just build them? Just get it over with, but there's so many moving You're now parts. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I would kind of, I suppose, next move, well, my kind of dad's point of view on it is that halfway through, because obviously when the houses get built, it's 25, they'll be built out in stages. 
you know, when the first mm-hmm. few stages kind of start selling, we'll start looking for other land. Yeah. Just not even to develop straight away, but kind of to get into the application of planning, kind of getting our surveys done and out the way. Because now we kind of realized how long it can take. Even just sitting on them and holding yeah. them as land banks, getting the planning on them and kind of selling them just with the plan, like uplift value on them. That was something we kind of never even thought about. Like oh, it's, yeah. Yeah. The the kind of most difficult thing I would say is the planning part of it. Once you get the planning and you tell your contractors, okay, you know, we can build now, it kind of just happens. It kind of goes on auto and they kind of know there's a few hurdles, but the planning is the bit where you're heavily involved, council meetings, you know, financial viability and cost appraisal, yeah. all the all the boring all of kind of <laughs> sort parts of development uh, at the very start. And then, so that's kind of our, our next stage is I still want to get rentals. I'm kind of still sat on the fact that I want to at least put maybe a quarter of the profits to put in through a few rentals, just so that there's security in income coming into the business. Because I know now how long things can take between getting a profit and getting paid from a development. That was another yeah. huge learning curve, I suppose. I thought, okay, you know, we kind of got it now. Houses are building. When does the money start coming in? When can we kind of do something else? You know, final profits don't come in until not in the 15 months when they're finished building, but, you know, the next six months after that until they're all sold. I thought, oh, yeah. my gosh, like three years wait for any kind of profit like does this seem entirely all worth yeah, it but then you know the kind of capital pot that you can get to push on to do other developments and as you know as you say if you just have you had if you have land bank you kind of uplift value and have them in the you know cycle of getting them done whilst you're already getting one done like i was watching one of your podcasts and you said you've got one going now in cambridge yeah, but you've got like two others as well, like in the mix, and one could take like a year to start. Those things I didn't even. Yeah. Well, start to my dad realize. always used to say, um, "Next year's money's made this year." So you know, yes. stuff we're working on now, as in the things that we're taking into planning, that's, uh, even next year's money uh, is it's not even next year's money; it's the money for two, three years time, because if you get to the end of a project only to start the next one, you've then got a lull period. You want to be able to finish building on one and start building on the next, which means yeah. you're in the building for the first, you need to do the pre-commencement phases for your next site. So there's always that that crossover between sites. Otherwise, you know, you do end up with, with lull periods, which yeah. you're doing nothing. And then not only have you got a lull period, but then before you, once you do get a site, you've then got the lead in before the profit comes. So so it does become this management of your pipeline to make sure you're constantly churning things out. And it is, it, like I say, my dad always used to say, this next year's money is made this year. Um, so you're always working on the next thing, basically, because otherwise you, you'll end up with nothing. That's why but, yeah. I need to, because I, I would hate to have another kind of lag period like now where we're kind of just sat waiting around for things to come back in, councils to talk. Yeah, and it's just, yeah. it's kind of the worst feeling because you're sat and you're thinking, you know, something could be happening right now. I could be doing something. You're just sat waiting around for emails and phone calls. Like, I want to be seeing yeah. the houses being built, land deals being done. So that's kind of, I'd happily buy more yeah. land immediately than to rush yeah. into yeah. anything else because just the process, I did not realize how long it, really really took for everything to kind of happen it, it, absolutely it is um but also you're you know you're a, you're a student of property development mastery what out of interest made you in the first i know you said obviously in your third year of uni you wanted to get into property but what mm. made you decide development's the thing i want to do and this is how i'm going to educate myself like what was that thought process behind that well, honestly there was Development was more my kind of dad leaning on me and saying, you know, 
long term is better than short term. You went, you know, development could take mm -hmm. a few years, but it's overall more profitable than getting the one rental that you want to do. So he kind of leaned yeah. me and said, you know, de development's a, the way to go. And I think it was by chance, you know, I've always been watching kind of property things on YouTube. I watched Tyler's, like, I think very first video of like, I bought a house when I was 23 <laughs> and made this amount profit on it. And I was kind of always just finding different kind of property things. And I think we were all sat in the living room one day and like a YouTube ad came up and it was like you talking about your property mastery course. And I'd seen like two of your videos on YouTube. And I think I was always like, you know, there needs to be more. There needs to be more videos, upload more. And then I was like, there's a course. <laughs> and honestly, like... <laughs> My dad was like, well, we both kind of don't really know what we're doing, where we stand. He went, even just on the educational side of things, it's kind of worth it just for the knowledge. Even like if we weren't going into development in the next year, just the knowledge of it would be kind of perfect. And that's what my dad was kind of, he just loves learning really. So, you know, we both kind of sat through it and you know, I made my little notes in a book and everything. And that was kind of what pushed it. There was no other things. Like I was doing three-day seminars, you know, our little webinar things. And there was nothing really that gave, like, everything. People would tell you yeah. the generalized thing, you know, you know save some yeah. money, buy some land, you know, develop. And we're like, okay, but how do we do that? How? <laughs> and no one would ever say, like, I, people would say, you know, you turn a profit, do this, but no one would give you step by step, not even like how to do it, just in what scenarios, what you can do, the different kind of information yeah. you would need. Like, it's not really go do this. It's, you know, you can do this. Here's all the information. Yeah. Do something with it yourself because you have all the, op I have, you basically gave all the options of what you could do and just said, I can be free Run with it. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. A lot of people, this is what I always say, a lot of people, a bit like what you said, like, it's not just buy land, build it. There's so many other options throughout that process that people yeah. don't realize is ability. And that's sort of what I guess we wanted to highlight or I wanted to highlight with PDM was, uh, yeah, ev everything basically. Because it is, you know, everyone's situation is so different. Like, there's some people out there who, would never want to build out because they never want to take on the um, the debt, you know, to do so. They, they have no yeah. interest in that risk. Fine, but that doesn't mean they can't go into development because there is, like you say, you know, taking the, the uplift in the planning, for example, and selling sites on. There's a lot of options for people. And I'm, I'm glad that that sort of translates, I guess, in the teaching that it is, I think, for everyone for that reason, because you don't have to, you don't have to buy land, build out. There's so many yeah. other options. And that was, that was, again, something that it taught us. We never knew that you could buy land, just get the planning and the up. We don't, well, we knew, you know, if, if something's got planning, it can probably be a, worth a little bit more. But we didn't really realize that a little bit more was like a, a lot a bit more because the, the, the planning is kind of the essential of the whole development stage. And it's kind of probably the hardest part to get. And that was something because we always said you know if if it gets to a stage and it becomes way too much stress once we get the planning we can always you know uplift it sell it and move on to something else we haven't quite got to that stressful stage yet i don't think it will come i think we're both determined to do it but that was something that we didn't even realize because i would always you know see on right move you know sales for land for planning yeah. commission and i always think well why why would you not just build it out yourself, guys? Like, I'm sure you could make so much more money. And then you realize that there's actually, you know, if you buy six different sites to get planning permission, it's probably a lot more valuable than just doing one development just, site. So, yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. And what would you sort of say to anyone that's maybe on the fence about going into property or going into development? You know, they're thinking, is it for me? Can I do it? What What would be... So I say anyone can do it, but it's I'm, easy no, for I'm, me to say. But what, what... 
pretty sure any everyone and anyone can do it. You just have to have that strong mind with it. Don't be like me starting out where you think it's all going to be rushed. You need to kind of have a sensible hat on, patience, because anyone can. I think oh, most of my friends now are looking at kind of getting into property in some way or another because they kind of realize it's you were kind of always told, you know, buying houses or developments were kind of unattainable. But you kind of realize yeah. how attainable it kind of all really is. It's really not that far out of people's reach. It, it can be done. You just yeah. need that good team around you to show you where to go. You know, don't be afraid of, that's something I would say, don't be afraid of having the other people around you that show you the way or like, having a course, you know, is don't yeah. just think, oh, I can, I can do this because you can, but you can't just do it. You do need the knowledge. You need to be yeah, willing to, to learn. Yeah, that's a key um, thing. Is you have, to, in my opinion, you have to be willing to invest in yourself. Be that, be that in the time by making connections, by you know, spending money on education or whatever it might be. You know, the big rewards of property aren't going to come just because you say you want to do it. You do have to make that commitment and investment yourself in terms of time and money to to get there. But you know, um, yeah. hopefully, you're now the rewards of you doing exactly that both you know the time and, and money investment that you made i mean i mean yeah hopefully because it's as i said you know even in uni it was something that i was looking at doing and it wasn't something we went into lightly it was something you know my dad always says if you want to do something research it go away like bring back a report to me like an excel spreadsheet show me the finances of how you can work it all out don't just say you know property i want to lightly get into that because it's not something you can just tiptoe into it's you know yeah heavy footed through it and but i do think you know definitely anyone can get into it you need to back yeah. yourself more than anything really yeah no 100 percent. And, and you know when people are maybe telling you it's not attainable still you know backing yourself and, and knowing it that it is um but yeah so i guess finally what you know we've got our first project but what are the plans what's the bigger picture what's the plans for the future What's the ultimate goal? Have you well, thought that far ahead? Yeah, no, well, I'm definitely thinking years ahead. My dad is definitely more focused on this, but we both kind of agreed that we don't want to do any more big scale developments. Um, okay. Doing, doing 25 to start with, it was quite a lot for our first. People have definitely made us yeah. very aware of that. Um, yeah. But we'd like to do more kind of luxury houses, um, kind of just smaller things of four to six kind of bigger homes because these homes we're doing at the minute, obviously it's Welsh valleys. They're not the biggest kind of homes. We kind of do like more attention to detail. And my dad loves um, little energy, finding ways to make houses more sustainable, things like that. He built this yeah. house to like a degree all out of wood with heat recovery and underground pumps. And he wants to do that kind of for our house he doesn't just want to have like another you know red brick homes he wants to put a stamp something long lasting that's going to actually be useful that's where he wants to go so yeah, we're kind of in the like the next step we'd go is definitely you know buying plots of land that we know we can do s smaller amounts but more sizable homes on and yeah kind of looking to put on the back burner some rentals that we can acquire just to keep more income coming in in these lag periods where things kind of don't happen so that's kind of yeah both that i'm kind of looking forward to getting to there already i, I, I always just get a bit too ahead of myself that's why i said patience is key i got to realize i'm here now already thinking three years ahead but i'm happy to do so yeah no, that's that's absolutely amazing. I'm I'm so pleased for you guys, and definitely once you like break ground, I'll have to come out to the valleys and and see it in person. But thank you, obviously, very much for chatting with me today. Um, really appreciated, and yeah, well, I definitely want to keep up to date with the progress.